Hello, in this problem I have a flat belt that is being used to transfer power from a motor over here to an alternator over here. Um, so if the coefficient of the friction between the belt and the pulley is going to be 0.5, it's a flat, pull, uh, flat belt, so there's no enhanced coefficient of friction. Uh, we're going to require a power of 100 watts. Um, again, a watt is a newton meter per second, uh, while the input is rotating at a rate of 1,000 RPMs. So we know the input speed, uh, and we know the power we need to transfer between these two pieces. Um, so the output is going to be, um, just as a dynamics problem, the output is going to be rotating at 1,428.6 RPM uh, if the input is at 1,000. Uh, we want to find the required resting tension for this belt uh, so that it's not going to slip. Um, so if the resting tension is too low, this whole thing is going to slip before I actually transfer any power. Uh, if it is too high, then I basically just need a stronger belt than what it would have. So I want to figure out what is the minimum resting tension in this belt. All right, so let's write some variables down. I know the power at the input, P1, is equal to the power at the output, P2, and that is 100 newton meters per second. All right, I also want to find omega 1 and omega 2. Uh, it's the angular velocity at the input and the output. So omega 1 is 1,000 RPM. Uh, and if I convert that to radians per second, uh, so this is rotations per minute, I need to go radians per second. It's going to be 104.7 radians per second. Omega 2, I know, is 1,428.6. It's up here. It's RPM, and I need to convert this to radians per second. So if I do that same conversion, I end up with 149.6 radians per second. That's just a simple unit conversion. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So the first equation we're going to look at, we need to find the maximum moment before uh, the belt is going to slip. And I know power and angular velocity, and I can relate these two things. I'm going to do this for the input first. Um, so P is equal to the moment times the angular velocity, or 100 Newton meters per second, or sorry, a thousand, no, oops, 100 Newton meters per second is equal to uh, the moment times 104.7 radians per second. All right, simple enough. I solve for this moment. And this is going to be 0.955 newton meters. So that'll be the moment that the input pulley needs to uh, exert to get the desired power of 100 watts. All right, so I can go further backwards with this. The m max, this would be the maximum moment that the pulley exerts before it starts slipping, uh, is equal to T2 max minus T1 times R1. And this is the radius of the input pulley. All right, so I don't know T2 max. I do know that this M, I want this to be on the verge of slipping, so I'm going to put that in there. Uh, T1 is the resting tension. That's what I'm looking to find. And R1 is 0.1 meters, uh, or 10 centimeters. All right, so since I also don't know this T2 max, I can only solve for the difference. So I can solve and say that uh, I'm going to bring basically 0.955, multiply that by 0.1, I get 9.55 newtons is going to be the difference between T2 max and T rest. 
All right, so I know one relationship there. Um, let's go to the usual equation we use when we're solving for uh, belt friction. And that's going to be T2 max is going to be equal to T1. And again, T1 is just the resting tension times E to the mu static times beta. All right, so T2 max don't know that. T rest, I don't know that. E, um, U static I know is um, 0.5 and the contact angle is 180 degrees or pi uh, radians. Alright, so with this I can solve and say that T2 max is going to be equal to 4.81 times the resting tension. All right, now I have two equations I can use. Uh, earlier on, I had this relationship between T2 max and T resting. Now I have the second relationship. Now I can uh, solve for these two uh, variables. So if I have 9.55 newtons is equal to 4.81 times the resting tension, that's T2 max minus the resting tension. I can solve for T rest. And I know that I need a resting tension of at least 2.51 newtons. All right, so all of this was still for the input. All right, so I need to figure out whether or not the input or the output is kind of the, the weak point. Uh, whichever requires a higher resting tension uh, is going to be the limiting factor. So I can perform basically the exact same analysis for the second part, and let's do that now. Uh, I'm going to have P is equal to the moment times angular velocity. Uh, again, the same power, 100 newton meters per second is equal to M times 149.6 radians per second. All right, so I get a moment of 0.668 newton meters. So I have a smaller moment on the output. Um, and I plug that into my moment equation. The moment, um, this is going to be M max. So I want it to be about to slip, and um, that's going to be equal to T2 max minus T1, which is the resting tension, same as before, times R2. All right, so this radius here, this moment goes over here. This radius is smaller. Uh, for our problem, it, it was 7 centimeters, or 0 0.07 meters. All right, and if I solve for that, I end up with 9.55 newton, newtons is equal to T2 max minus T1. And this should look, or uh, T rest. This should look familiar because we wind up with the exact same numbers as before. Uh, we had a larger... Um, angular velocity, but the smaller radius cancels that out. And so we end up with one equation that's exactly the same. Uh, we still have the second equation we're going to need to deal with, and that is T2 max is equal to T1, or the resting tension, times E to the mu static times beta. All right, mu static is still equal to 0.5. And beta, I'm assuming both of these, they're both pretty close to 180 degrees, so they're both pi radians. And this is the exact same equation I had before as well. And so with both of these equations being the same, I end up with the same value. I can go through the exact same 
um, kind of algebra I went through up here, but I find the resting tension or the minimum resting tension I require at this output is going to be 2.51 newtons. So it'll be about to slip at both of the two locations here. Uh, and so with that, I've solved for kind of my minimum required resting tension that I need to have in this belt to transfer 100 watts of power. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.